with the rapid economic growth, China's energy consumption has grown 1.5 times of the GDP growth. So it's much faster. The energy consumption growth is much faster than the GDP growth. For example, in the urban area, people are thinking about buying cars, and they want bigger houses. And in the southern part of the country,、uh, people are thinking about having heating in their house. The winter、uh, is pretty cold. It's about、uh, at its coldest weather, it can be minus ten Celsius, and up to two. Celsius, but we don't have any heating in the household. We just wear a lot of clothes, <laughs> and sitting in the sun in the daytime during the winter. So, with the higher income, people are thinking about whether they want to install those heating equipments in their household. So, it made government worry. How can they achieve development? With a sustainable energy supply,、uh, well,、uh, we do not really have a bill to say which is clean energy. We have、uh, energy conservation plan from 2006 to 2010. So the objective is to reduce the energy consumption of per GDP by 20 percent within five years. And interestingly,、uh, since then, the government run a lot of campaigns. They run the poster design、uh, context, and also they put、uh, advertising on TV. And、uh, so, although it's not really、uh, have a direct economic impact on people's lives, but it's quite visible for normal people. Those campaign messages told people how to use the shower, how to cook efficiently, how encourage people to use the pub public transportation. The reason they、um, adopted those measures, policies which has been seen climate friendly, are due to the energy security concern. But, however. The climate、uh, mitigation is a co-benefit. Six years ago, when the Chinese government had observed the rapid growth of wind energy in Germany, in Denmark, and then they saw, wow, this probably is a new, exciting economic development opportunity. And it will reduce our risk of coal and oil dependency, and it's coal benefit too. <laughs> coal benefit both for the environment and for the economy. So they started in doing、um, research on the renewable energy legal framework and the technology, and also there has been these pilot projects funded by World Bank. German government to experiment renewable energy in China. I think it also、uh, these has been very good demonstration、uh, projects for Chinese government and industry. So in early 2006, Chinese government adopted a renewable energy law. It's quite similar to the German feeding tariff. I think then now we've experienced three years of 100% growth on in. Uh, wind energy capacity. I think China can take the lead for developing countries. Can set up a good model for other developing countries to show that as a developing country, you can develop、uh, in the low carbon path, and to demonstrate that. With the international cooperation between developing countries and developed countries, the technology can be innovated. To meet the requirement of the climate protection, China is a more vulnerable country on climate impact than European and North American countries, and they will have to suffer from the impact as well. So the dynamics is that if there is a cooperative atmosphere in the negotiation, then the countries will move forward. Including China, 
this is the most important international negotiation after WTO. This is not not only an environmental international law. It's also about it's a development international law, or even can call it as the Americans are speaking in this negotiation. It's an economic law. How to share the economic growth space in the future? I think for my kids, probably I want him or her to be able to sit in the classroom with heating and don't don't need don't need to be afraid to go to school because of the cold classrooms.